imagine this. You're lying on the operating table, the lights are bright, you hear the beeping of the monitors, and suddenly you realize you're awake. You can hear voices. You can feel fingers and metal tools poking and prodding inside your body, but you can't move a muscle or even scream. Sounds like a total nightmare, right? Well, even though this phenomenon is extremely rare, it is a real thing. It's called intraoperative awareness, and it's one of the most feared complications of general anesthesia. I'm Dr. Daniel Medell, an anesthesiologist, and today we're going to talk about what intraoperative awareness actually is, why it happens, how often it happens, and what we do to prevent it. When most people imagine waking up during surgery, they think of full-blown consciousness, eyes open, feeling every incision, and screaming in pain. In reality, that's incredibly rare. Movies like Awake and some TV dramas have exaggerated it for shock value, but the truth is more nuanced. Awareness during surgery can happen on a spectrum, from vague dreamlike memories to partial sensations of touch or sound, all the way up to actual pain. And even in cases where people are aware, many can't move or communicate because of the medications we use to keep your body still during surgery. Now here's a twist though. In my specialty, which is anesthesia for neurosurgery, Sometimes we actually want the patient awake. In certain brain surgeries like tumor removals near areas that control speech or movement, we actually wake the patient up in the middle of the surgery so they can talk, read, or move on command. That way the surgeons can map the brain in real time and avoid damaging those critical functions. Now, of course, before we wake the patient up, we make sure they have enough pain medication on board so that they're comfortable enough to sit there for anywhere from five minutes to a couple of hours. But interestingly, the brain itself doesn't have any nerve endings, so you don't feel a thing, even if the surgeon's poking your brain with their finger. I've had patients who are really adamant about not losing certain abilities like playing a guitar during a brain surgery. So we let them bring their instruments into the OR, and during the crucial moments when they're awake during the procedure, we hand it to them and ask them to play us a song. Now that's a very different kind of intraoperative awareness. It's planned, it's controlled, and the patient is prepared for it well in advance of the surgery. But for someone who doesn't know that that's even a thing, if it happens, it can be really terrifying. Intraoperative awareness happens when a patient becomes conscious enough during general anesthesia to have some recall of events afterward. So if a patient has a moment where they vaguely hear some people talking in the distance, but later they have no idea that that actually happened, it's not technically intraop awareness. There has to be some level of consciousness, sometimes just the perception of sounds, sometimes sensations, sometimes pain, and then later explicit memories of things that happened while they were under anesthesia. It's estimated to happen anywhere between one in a thousand to one in 20,000 cases in the general population. That means most anesthesiologists will see it at least once in their careers. But in certain high-risk surgeries, that number can be even higher, sometimes up to one in a hundred, and I'll explain why in a second. General anesthesia uses medications to make you unconscious, to block pain, and to prevent movement. So if any one of these isn't deep enough, especially the unconsciousness part, awareness can creep in. So why would this happen if we're so careful? Well, there are several possible reasons. One, light anesthesia on purpose. Some surgeries like major heart or trauma operations require keeping anesthesia lighter to maintain blood pressure and good circulation. Heavy anesthesia can be dangerous in these patients, so they oftentimes get very little. Rapid sequence emergencies. In emergencies where every second counts, we might prioritize getting the surgery started quickly, and sometimes anesthesia depth takes a moment to catch up. But again, in these cases, you've got much bigger problems, and your brain is unlikely to store a six-second memory of you hearing a nurse talking about the cute thing her granddaughter did last week. Drug tolerance. Patients who take certain medications, like chronic pain patients on opioids, or people who use alcohol or street drugs, may require much higher doses to stay fully unconscious. Equipment or human error. Rare, but possible. If an IV line gets kinked or an infusion pump malfunctions, the anesthetic may not be delivered correctly or sufficiently enough to keep you asleep. But most of the time, awareness is not due to a mistake. It's because we're balancing the benefits of a life-saving surgery with the safest possible anesthesia. Patients who've experienced intraoperative awareness often describe hearing voices or surgical sounds from the OR, feeling pressure or tugging sensations in their bodies, being unable to move or speak because of muscle relaxants, and in rare cases, actual pain. This can be emotionally traumatic, sometimes even leading to PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. 
Patients have reported hearing their surgeons talking with each other or asking the scrub nurse to hand them a particular instrument and then losing consciousness again. Sometimes they report feeling something pulling on their skin, but thinking it was just a dream. Some people report hearing the heart monitor beeping in the background for a short period of time. And rarely people are conscious enough to think to themselves, I hope they know I'm awake. And in the rarest of cases, a person can feel the searing pain of their bodies being operated on with scalpels and forceps and suture needles. But thankfully, in the vast majority of cases, the sensation is not pain. It's more like just a groggy, vague awareness for about a second or two. Okay, enough nightmare fuel. Let's talk prevention. In the operating room, anesthesia providers have multiple safeguards to keep awareness from happening. Continuous monitoring. We track heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen, and sometimes use special EEG-based monitors to measure brain activity. If you're starting to experience any awareness, your heart rate and blood pressure are likely to start shooting up. And your fight or flight response is definitely gonna raise your metabolism, so the amount of carbon dioxide you'll be exhaling will increase too. Whenever we see that combination of events, the first thing we do is increase the amount of anesthesia you're getting, assuming it's safe to do so, which it almost always is. Redundant systems. We often use multiple infusion pumps, set up different alarms for our monitors, and constantly check our equipment to make sure anesthesia delivery is consistent and sufficient for each patient. Individualized dosing. We adjust doses based on the patient's weight, medical history, and cardiovascular or metabolic response during surgery. Communication. If we anticipate a light anesthesia period, like in high-risk surgeries, we'll explain that to the patient beforehand. Sometimes knowing it's possible helps reduce the shock if vague memories do occur. In other words, we take intraoperative awareness very seriously. If you think you've experienced awareness during surgery, it's important to speak up, preferably as soon as you're fully awake and alert in the recovery area. First, tell your anesthesiologist or nurse exactly what you remember whether it's sounds, sensations, pain, or even just a dreamlike experience, the more detail, the better. Why? Because it helps us piece together exactly what might've happened. We'll review your anesthesia records, check the medications and doses, and see if there's anything we can learn for the future. Sometimes what feels like awareness can actually be something called anesthetic dreaming, which is a kind of vivid dream that most often happens at the end of the surgery when you're waking up from the anesthesia. These dreams can be so real that people are convinced they were awake, even when the anesthetic depth records indicate that that's unlikely. But if there was a period of partial awareness, it's important that it be acknowledged so the patient doesn't feel like they've been gaslighted by their surgeon or anesthesia provider. In those situations, we can arrange for follow-up care, like counseling or even medication in the short term, to reduce the risk of long-term anxiety or PTSD. So yes, people can wake up during surgery, but it's extremely rare. And when it does happen, it's almost never the full, painful alien abduction movie scene version you might imagine. As anesthesia providers, we train for years and years and years to make sure your experience is safe, controlled, and as comfortable as humanly possible. We monitor you every second, adjust medications on the fly, and have multiple layers of backup if anything starts to drift out of range. Think of it like flying on a plane. Turbulence might happen, but your pilots are prepared and trained and have systems in place to keep you safe. We're your pilots for surgery. If this video eased your fears or gave you some new insight, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to peek behind the curtain of anesthesia and medicine every week, hit that subscribe button. Now I want to hear from you. Have you ever experienced awareness during a surgery? Tell us what it was like in the comments section, whether it was funny or not so funny. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.